Up next, we have a welterweight bout. This should be the last fight in the prelim card between Magomed Magomed Karimov versus Jajoa Zeferino. I'm not stuttering there. It's Magomed Magomed Karimov. It'd be like if your name was Dan Johnson, and then they translated it to like a Russian name, and it was Dan Dan Johnson. Like Magomed Magomed Karimov. <laughs> anyway, Magomed Karimov is 29-6 overall. Four won his last five fights. He hails from Mashkala, Russia. So he's from Dagestan. 32 years old. 32 years old, 6 foot 1 in height with a 73 inch reach. As for Joa Severino, the Brazilian samurai, he's 26 and 9 overall. 5 and 0 in his last 5 fights. He hails from Middletown, New York. 5 foot 9 in height with a 69 inch reach. He's out of Renzo Gracie Academy. 91% of the votes on Tapology are coming in from Magomed Karimov, only 9% for Zeferino. I do like Magomed Karimov to win the fight, but I think there's a chance here for Zeferino to make it close. I think Magomed Karimov, I think we saw some chinks in the armor in his last fight against Ray Cooper III when he lost the fight via TKO. He got tired in that fight, got a little lazy with his stand up defense, ends up getting knocked out with some very basic punches he probably wins this fight but there's a but there i won't have as much confidence in this as some of the other fights in this card some basic details of these two fighters magomed karimov is a 14 year pro he's a wrestler by trait he has amazing submission skills his striking defense is his weakness we'll talk more about it as we break down this film as for zeferino he's a boxer by trait 17 year pro has very high volume but not much of a finisher as for the fighter profile on magomed magomed karimov he's born in dagestan russia he graduated college with a degree in athletics he earned the title of master of sport in russia he's won a variety of tournaments and belts in different forms of mixed martial arts, Thai boxing, hand-to-hand -hand combat, kudo, and he's a three-time pancreation champion. He won the PFL Grand Prix in 2018. He went 2-0 as an amateur. He went pro 2008. He's a family man, married with two children. Magomed's most notable opponent. He fought Ray Cooper III last year, 2021, round three TKO loss in the semifinals of PFL. He was winning that fight in that round. He had Ray Cooper hurt. Got a little sloppy, exposed his chin, got a little tired as well. He got hit with some basic shots and just went down and that was it. I think he'll look at that film and be very regretful of how he fought that round. He had Ray Cooper hurt. The most notable opponents from Magomed Karimov, Ray Cooper the third last year, round three TKO loss to the PFL playoffs. He came into that fight as a minus 215 favorite. Round one was very close. He got out wrestled in round two a little bit, which is a little surprising. He's a very good wrestler, but Ray Cooper's a good wrestler himself. In round three, he had Cooper tired. He had him hurt. He was starting laying some heavy strikes on him. Unfortunately, he gets a little bit sloppy, exposes his chin. Ray Cooper gets him hurt, knocks him down, and that's all she wrote. I'm sure he watches that film and thinks to himself, I probably should have been a little more tactful in round three when I had Cooper hurt. The first time that Ray Cooper and him fought, 2018, he won by round two submission. He looked a lot better in that first fight. The second fight was a little bit different. Ray Cooper looked more prepared. He was pushing the pace at times. If anything, my biggest concern with Magomed Karimov was his conditioning at the end of that fight. He looked very tired, was not moving his head, and that's why he got hit with a few punches and got knocked down. Some other opponents in his background, he fought Sadabu C, 2021 decision win. He was a minus 1,000 favorite in that fight. He also beat Chris Curtis twice, who's currently 2-0 in the UFC. He beat John Howard, round one submission win, who's a former UFC fighter. He fought and defeated Bojan Velikovic twice, who's a former UFC fighter. And last but not least, Curtis Melender, 2021 round one Ezekiel Choke win, who's another former UFC fighter. A very solid finish rate. He's, finished, he's got a solid finish rate. He's finished four of his last seven wins. He's got a pretty good finish rate. He's finished four of his last seven wins. My concerns for my man Karimov, the last fight against Cooper. He looked a bit tiredly in that fight and loses the fight more so because of his fighter IQ and poor conditioning. His boxing offense is a bit rough. It's that typical Dagestani boxing offense where they're just striking to set up a takedown. As example in that fight against Cooper, his head's wide open. He's not being disciplined about his guard, not displaying good head movement. Against any good fighter who can force the fight into the feet, he can have some problems. Again, his boxing's not great. He gets tired. His hands are down low. A lot of his weaknesses in his game were exposed in that last fight against Cooper. It wasn't like it was just that round. The prior rounds before that, he was also not doing so well. Cooper was backing him up and exposing his boxing defense. As for Zeferino, he was born and raised in northern Brazil, fourth degree black belt in BJJ. He went pro 2005, a long time ago, 17 year pro career. He fought in World Series of Fighting, PFL, and had two stints in the UFC. He's currently 5-1 and one in the PFL. Some of his most notable opponents, he fought Gleason Tibau, 2021 decision win. He came into that fight as a slight favorite. Tibau is a very well-known veteran, a former UFC fighter himself. That was a quality win. He also fought Bojan Velikovic, 2019 decision win. Velikovic had a short stint in the UFC. He came into that fight as a slight favorite. He lost to John Fitch, 2016, another former UFC fighter. He came into that fight as a slight dog. And then one more fight, Brian Foster, 2015 TKO loss. Foster is also a former UFC fighter. Looking at the topology on Zeferino, he's fought some pretty good guys, people with some UFC experience. Some things I like about Zeferino, he's on a nice winning streak. He hasn't lost a fight in five years. Excellent submission skills. He's had two submission wins in his last four fights. He's very durable. Only been finished one time in 35 MMA fights. And he has decent finishing ability. He's had four finishes in his last six wins. Now my concerns with Zeferino, he comes up short against elite level competition, not the average guys. The average guys, he does a pretty good job. But when he's facing UFC level guys, he tends to come up a little bit short. 
He also tends to load up on his right hand. He's an orthodox dance fighter. His right hand's his power hand. At times, he'll overload it, miss, be off balance. Next thing you know, he's open for counters, being taken down. Against Magomed Karimov, I can see a takedown happening because he overloads on the punch, gets off balance, maybe gives up his back. Next thing you know, he's on the ground in the wheelhouse of Magomed Karimov. The fights we watched to bring down this film, we watched Zeferino vs. Tibau, 2021. Zeferino vs. Velikovic, 2019. Magomed Karimov vs. Cooper, the second fight. And Magomed Karimov vs. Cooper, the first fight. And lastly, Magomed Karimov vs. C, 2021. To watch those fights, if you look down below here on YouTube, in our description, you're going to see those five links available as part of our free video library. My final thoughts on these two fighters. Excellent experience against top-level fighters, people in the UFC. They're both coming out of very good gyms. ATT for Magomed and Renzo Gracie for Zeferino. Magomed has a slight edge in the finishing department because of his BJJ skills. Zeferino has a striking edge. He's a better boxer, a little cleaner, better combinations. Magomed boxes or throws strikes just to set up takedowns. The typical Dagestani fighter. Magomed will have the grappling edge. Zeferino has good BJJ skills, but not at the level of Magomed Karamov. I don't believe either fighter has an edge in the heart department or passion. You got a Dagestani wrestler against a Brazilian fighter. They're both coming to bang. No one's going to give up very easily. Could the fight end because of a tap or a submission? That's possible. Both of them have very good submission skills. But I imagine the fight actually goes a distance, all three rounds. We don't have the lines available for the props yet or the money line. The two props I like the most are like Magomed Karimov by submission and the fight going the distance. The prop I like the most for this fight is the fight going to decision. There's an outside chance of a submission by either fighter, but ultimately I think it goes three tough rounds and the fight goes a distance. When that prop comes out, you might want to give it some consideration. The money line is not yet available, but our estimated money line for this fight would be minus 350 for Magomed Karimov and plus 275 for Zeferino. By the time the fight closes, you're going to be looking at Magomed Karimov around minus 500 and Zeferino around plus 400. If Zeferino outstrikes him on the feet, Goes to the scorecards, gets a win, not going to be surprised. At minus 300 range, minus 350, I'm not going to bet Magomed Karimov straight up. I'll have him to a few parlays. Feel like Magomed Karimov has a lot to prove. He got exposed against Ray Cooper. And Zeferino is a very tough fighter. At 36, he's still very much in his prime. Treats at Renzo Gracie. Good submission skills. Good submission defense. In summary, this fight's going to be pretty close. So be very careful with this one. Don't over parlay it. I would steer clear from betting on Magomed straight up if the money line's around minus 300 or higher. Not a lot of value there, and this fight's probably going to be very close. That's the breakdown, guys. Thanks for joining us. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe, and we're on to the next video.